Arby's. We have the meats. <laughs> Fuck, I hate that commercial. Almond. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Alright, what's tight? We're out, we're getting Arby's, we're on the move. Beauty day. Uh, in Canada, they have this radio advertisement where it's like, it's, a, it's an Arby's thing, and then it's like, at the end, it's like, Arby's, we have the meats. And it sounds like they hile, hired, not hiled, they didn't hile him, <laughs> Hitler. Uh, they hired, uh, is it James Earl, James Earl Jones or something like that? The guy who had, I think he's Darth Vader's voice, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be mistaken. Anyways it ends with that and it's like <laughs> it's the shittiest advertisement but effective in annoying and pissing you off to the point where you think it's so shitty that it sticks in your head so really it did its job okay so shout out to the writer of that advertisement for using jedi mind tricks on me to know it you know what i mean okay so i was craving a there's this place called Royal Aleppo that's open here. It's like a traditional shawarma shop. I've never tried it. I went to it. I was inside. I looked at the vibe. I didn't feel right. A single shawarma alone was 13 before tax. And then I was just like, I just want some charred meat like that, you know, in bread. And Arby's has a legit good gyro sandwich with like that type of meat. And then you can get some sides and a drink and it's only like 12 bucks. So I was just like, I'll just go to Arby's. But anyways, what's pissing me off now is, is that guy's name James Earl Jones? I think I'm right, could be wrong, but he's also, what I remember him from is, uh, he was in Field of Dreams with Kevin Koss. He was the guy that you hear him in his head, like I'm hearing him in, his, in my head now. <laughs> because we've got the meats but yeah no no he like went he had to go try to pick him up at his apartment and he takes him to the baseball game and then they see it on the scoreboard and he's it's all part of the you know r.i.p ray Liotta is what i'm really saying okay because it's like his dad and shit and then shoeless joe jackson and kevin costner in his prime what else do you want from me I don't even know what I'm talking about. What I do know is this, is once I pay and we start eating, I have some socially neurotic thoughts. I have a subway story for y'all. And then we're gonna talk about this garbage bag. I just got a car wash, we'll talk about it. I'm going full crystalia. My neuroses are firing on all syllables. That's what he says, usually cylinders, but he says firing on all syllables. And the OCD, it's the OCD. I have the observational societal OCD. I just have it, can't get away from it. It's the way my brain works. I don't know why it works this way, but it works this way. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about it. All right, 1529. I added on a buffalo slider. So I got a Greek gyro meal, a drink, cherry Coke, large curly fry, extra gyro sauce, no charge ketchup and honey mustard no charge and at the window she leaned out and said to me and this is why arby's has the best service possible she leaned out to me and said do you want any more additional sauces and i said yes i could take some ranch for the buffalo slider as well free of charge okay N most places don't do that for you most places don't give a shit about your sauces and if you'd like some more upon the house so arby's and and the the uh the lady on the microphone the drive through the headset so nice killed it so arby's always gets a sitting ovation from me in my car truck thing like we've been doing it lately come on down to view the real thing all right, down for the real thing visuals. We got the curlies. They look a little under seasoned. They usually have a little more dusting on there, but we got our ranch and our honey musk and our Heinz and our extra tzatziki on the side. They hooked it up. And then we got the sandwich here looking banging. We're gonna drizz all that extra tzatziki on there. And then we got this guy here, this little buffalo chicken slide there. So we'll check that out. I've never had this before. And that's it. Wait, wait, wait. I gotta bring you in for the sauce moment. For the extra tzatzik. Tzatzik. Tzatziki, let's get freaky, right? The more 
the merrier. All right, y'all. Like I said, I got some neurotic social outing talk story for y'all today. Some of y'all might really like it. Some of y'all might not. But that's just the way the cookie breaks in your hand sometimes. Okay, look at this though. Before we do anything, I do want to have a bite of this slider. I've never had a slider here. And uh, it just looks like a chicken nuggie tossed in buff, untoasted bun. And uh, I'm gonna definitely drizz some extra ranch on top. I have a feeling this ranch isn't the same ranch that they probably squirt onto this thing. But I could be wrong. I don't know. Let's find out. How to This thing's like $2.50. Arby's chicken. Always on point. Some of the best strips in the game. So you never really have to worry. About nasty chicken at Arbs. That's just a fact. That buffalo is kicking me. Very hot. Let your beak. with a full sugar cherry coke. All right, amazing combo. Curly fries with the honey mustard. Just because the curly fries do have a little kick to them as well, a little spice. Offset that with the sweetness. Of the high mustard amazing and sometimes when you get real magruber about it you empty your ketchup packets onto the lid of the side tzatziki sauce ramekin and just have yourself a dipping lid improvisational food engineering 101 <laughs> Let's see how they are in tzatziki. Let's go with all of it. Oh, it's really good with that. Oh my God. So, are we gonna hit this with a diaper on? Because we know some things are gonna push to the back. And we're gonna get into this little social observation story of mine. <laughs> Too good. Oh my God. This was the right move. Okay, so the other day, I get this massive craving for a little. Okay, so the other day, I get this massive crave for a veggie sub from Subway. From time to time, I get this crazy crave for a toasted veggie sub, a little off camera delight, right? Just something personal for your boy. To have a quick smash, a nice little lunch, and that's it. Go to Subway. We got there, it's 12 o'clock. So it's lunchtime, it's during the week. She's gonna be a little biz. That's fine. Walk in, there's five people on like the conga line of Subway. That's how Subway works, right? It's like you start at the end over here you run along the glass case of meat, cheese, and veg, and you end up at the till to pay. Well, we all know how it works. 
because all subways are laid out the same. They're carbon copy clones, they're cutouts, they're designed that reason for a reason. Designed that way for a reason. They're idiot proof. Or so you might think. She is Zosse in there and I love it. Um, <laughs> so I walk in, I know what's up. I take my position at the back of the line, right near where like the bread guy is. And just after me walks in this lady who's 60 years old, let's call her. <laughs> she walks to the front of the line and stands right at the till and is staring at the person getting their final veggies and, and it being wrapped, or so, so, sorry, sauces and wrapped, and the person talking to them about, you know, what they want, blah, blah, blah. So this lady's standing there for a couple minutes, just clueless. Another lady comes in who's about her similar age, stands behind me. Right after that, one of the workers goes, like, excuse me, ma'am, are you planning on getting food? And she goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she goes, well, the line starts back there. <laughs> okay. First things first, if you're 60 years old, from the time you're born to 60, lines exist in life like there's always a line like every day you experience a line you know what i mean so in, the, in my head i'm giving the benefit of the doubt well maybe she's never been to subway before so she goes to go to the back of the line so she goes to go to the back of the line the lady who came in after her that was behind me goes she pulls the nice person card she goes you were here before me you can have my spot and i'm in my head i go no 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 you need to make her <laughs> suffer her stupidity i want her to be penalized <laughs> for that right if she can't figure out that something that basic she should not get your spot. <laughs> but she was nice. Nicer than me, I guess. And gave her the spot. Cool. So. Three more people come in. We're like nine deep in the line right now. I'm on deck to order my bread and say what I want. You know, veggie on herb and cheese, toasted cheddar cheese. The first guy's tasks. So the dude in front of me, buddy is, he's my guy. He's my subway soulmate. He's on point. He is polite, knows exactly what he wants. He's articulate. He has no confusion about what's happening. He knows how to curate and tailor his sub exactly how he likes it because that's what Subway is, right? You start and you tailor the experience from the bread to the veg, to the toast, to the not toast, to the cheese, to the not cheese, to this much lettuce, to that much tomatoes, to this much sauce, to that much sauce, to what sauce you want, to what veggies you want. That's the point of Subway. So the lady behind me goes now, the one who got the, the line jump. She said the, says the two subs that she wants to the kid. And he goes, on what bread? And she goes, <laughs> doesn't matter. Now in my head, I'm like, lady, Make a fucking choice. Make a decision, because here's why. It matters for a bunch of reasons. A, that's the point of Subway. You get to have your choice. You get a choice. Make a choice. Be preferential, you know what I mean? 
also don't leave that on the, the, the worker because then what if he goes to grab something and it's something that all of a sudden you're like actually no no no, i don't want that so okay so what he does is what everybody would do grabs the white bread because who's going to be argumented over white argumented over, over white bread usually nobody because it's just like the standard classic bread of society solid move on his part but i'm still pissed because here's why you also have to make the decision about your bread because if you get your two subs because you got two subs and one's definitely they're foot long so there's no way she's eating both there's one for somebody else guaranteed if all of a sudden in your subway eating experience now later when you leave you're dissatisfied and maybe it becomes because of the bread choice I know your ignorant ass who stood at the front of the line <laughs> is gonna blame it on something like that. Like a Karen moment. And then when with no self-awareness that like, oh hey, like I didn't tailor my experience to how I wanted it. I could just th the white privilege and ignorance <laughs> vibing off this woman <laughs> was astounding to me in my neuroses. <laughs> So in my head, I'm already fumed up about that. Now I'm thinking like, there's so many more choices to come ahead. There's toasting and there's cheese and then there's sauces and vegetables. I'm like, is this lady going to be able to make any of her own decisions? Seemingly, she had that part figured out. So that was a relief. Now, they had three people working. They had Two employees who clearly worked there for a while and a new guy so the girl who obviously has worked there for a while starts doing my sub i just say i'll take all these veggies in this area plus banana peppers so she gloves up starts making it in that time the new guy he had put a sub on the panini press so the panini press starts beeping He's like lost in the sauce. Literally, he's like saucing another sub. Can't get to it. So she goes to get to the panini uh, press to take the sub off. But she got two vegetables away from being done making my, my veggie part of my sub. Where she could have just passed it off. He would sauce it, wrap it, and pay. So you guy. <laughs> so she goes to the panini. She goes to the, to the pay area. He takes over my stuff to finish two veggies away. And he just veggied and sauced a sub before me, but he didn't touch, like, I didn't, it was a meatball sub, but he didn't have, you know, any marinara on his gloves. And even if he did, I wouldn't give a shit. I just wanted my last two veggies, some squirts of sauce, and to be on my merry way. <laughs> but he started to go do my veggies. And then she pipes in going, you have to change your gloves because you just did another person's uh, meatball sub. And I go, I just interject immediately. I go, I don't care about the gloves. You can just, just the last few veggies and some sauce. It's fine. Like I'm not, I'm not picky. And then because I said that I put this guy in the dilemma of like the customer is always right. Do what the customer says. But also, I'm new, and my, like, trainee, or my trainer, is telling me as a trainee to switch out the gloves, which is, like, subway policy. It really is. But the only thing about that, those gloves, the switching of those gloves, have you seen, have you heard of those gloves? I don't know what they're made out of, but they are the stupidest fucking gloves. And I know they do it so they can, like, maximize, you know profits because they don't want to spend a ton on the production of the gloves but because they go through so many pairs a day but the process of getting that next pair of gloves on i'm just like honestly dude you could you could literally put that shit on my sandwich barehanded at this point i don't give a fuck but he gloved up he listened to his trainer because it's his job and respect i get it for sure i'm down 
and then we moved to sauce and he was very very like light with the sauce so we had to have like a whole thing about like me getting enough sauce <laughs> which is fine he doesn't know yet or whatever but just the whole <laughs> the whole thing up until that point then he checked me out i of the till that was smooth that was fine i was good now i was on my way that little part of it is whatever it's just kind of funny i hate the i just hate the gloves there and i feel like they should have had just more of a production line system where people just stayed where they were instead of bouncing around and passing things back and forth that being said though the lady in the start part of me is like i want to give her the benefit of the doubt because i started thinking about my grandma but then i realized my grandma's not stupid my grandma wouldn't do that but then I start thinking, okay, she's older. Maybe she's having some memory issues. Maybe she's having some early onset dementia that nobody knows about. But then I think, well, she, she really shouldn't be driving because she drove. I saw her pull up. And then I'm just like, in my head, I, I, I want to give her the benefit of the doubt. But when I'm out in public and I see people do these things, and then somebody's nice enough to like allow them to go in front of them in the line, I'm like, I think they, I want, <laughs> I'm like, no she has to suffer her stupidity you know what i mean or am i just the only one because for me it's like that's how she learns the lesson of like for next time that okay what like but here's what's even more mind-blowing to me is like she was very obviously canadian she wasn't foreign she's a white old lady uh and she knew how to order once she, like she knew what she wanted but just didn't have the bread choice and then it's just like I guarantee she's been to Subway before, but I don't get why she just stood at the front of the line. So I don't know, maybe something is going on with her. Maybe she's having an off day, but I want to give her the benefit of the doubt, but I don't want to give her the benefit of the doubt because I feel like she needs to be penalized for that stupidity or ignorance. Okay, that's just me. All right, to end this, another side of neuroses. Just got a car wash, okay? They leave you this little garbage bag, okay? Now it's clever, it's psychologically clever, and here's why. Because they think they're doing you a little helpful service. Like, oh, here's a little garbage bag for your vehicle, any stuff, type of shit that you have, you can throw in your little garbage bag and it's cute and whatever. But really what it is, is it's a sales calling card to just make you realize like, oh, here's all the other ways you could spend money with us, which is genius on their part. It's just marketing 101, it's just psychologically intelligent to do this it's like leaving a calling card with your services uh here take my card type shit but really as a person who doesn't keep a dirty car i take all the garbage out of the car all the time i don't keep it like i don't have a garbage bag in my car for garbage so really what this is when they leave it in there for me it's just another piece of garbage that's technically a garbage bag that now is garbage that i have to now go deal with and throw out because i don't want this in my vehicle <laughs> so now basically after my car wash you just gave me a piece of garbage so thank you <laughs> and that's it these are my neuroses this is how i think that's my how my brain works over analytical and dissecting scenarios to the nth degree infinitesimally <laughs> and that's me so till the next one <laughs> You know what to do. Eat good, overthink. And stay true.